So welcome to TMC Newsroom. This is Carl Ford talking about 4G WE type issues. And I'm here with my pal Manish Gupta from, uh, from Kabira. Kabira, is it Kabira Systems or just Kabira? Kabira Technologies. Kabira Technologies. And uh, it's Kabira.com, so I didn't even think about how to, to do what would be after it. That's good. Kabira is good enough. Yeah, and so Kabira means large. So let's talk about let's talk about the large things you do. So tell people about who Kabira is and what you guys do. So Kabira has been around for 13 years, and uh, we only focus on things that require scale. Kabira's technologies support some of the most demanding applications when it comes to transactionality. In the financial services industry, in the telecommunications industry, uh, we have done billions and billions of transactions. We have served, today we serve over 700 million subscribers around the world, uh, which are customers uh, of our uh, service providers. Right. So. So, and, and let's talk about it from the financial side right now, because I know you've got an announcement in Brazil. I want to talk about what, what you announced about Brazil, and then we'll go to, to telecom. So today we announced a relationship with a company in Brazil called Kaizen. Kaizen works with the players such as CLO, which is Visa's uh, counterpart in Brazil, as well as some of the telecom service providers in, in that country. Uh, they will do work on Kabira's fluency platform, customize the applications, uh, do some unique work both in financial services and communication sector, and will be our system integration partner there. Okay, so, so now, like you said, you handle large-scale issues, and, and one of the interesting things about your, your technologies is the way you cache and make it so that you can provide um, multiple, I want to say, back-end system support all from uh, from the network as it's occurring. So, uh, can we talk a little bit about orchestration and how you guys see um, rolling out services and providing f things like policy control and that kind of stuff? Yeah, you know, the world of communication services is becoming very complex. The end users are demanding services, variety of services, faster services, and that is leading to incredible amount of complexity in the network complexity in the infrastructure, IT infrastructure. And it is all about harnessing the value within these infrastructures and orchestrating the assets that already exist in the IT infrastructure and the network. Kabira plays an integral role in these communications infrastructure as a layer between the IT networks, IT and the, and, and the network. We take information such as caching from policy servers, caching data from profile servers, mapping that real-time to data that's actually flowing in the network at the bearer path. We apply real-time policies to that traffic depending on what the, user, uh, what the service provider wants to do on a particular user. Based on the profile of the user, based on the services that need to be delivered, the segmentation that the operator wants to do, the pricing packages they want to apply to, and so on. Right, and in previous conversations, as, as we've talked, there's kind of an analytics capability w based on your stuff as well. So, in effect, I, I came away feeling that um, one of the one of the advantages was that people who are trying to find ways to differentiate services don't necessarily have to think about it as being changing bundles of pricing to the end user, but they'll find revenues on the opposite side of actually, you know how they provide the metric information back to the sources that they're connecting to, be it a, a video or something else like a financial transaction. Is that an accurate portrayal? It certainly is. In fact, uh, there is a wealth of information available to the service provider. The issue is how do they harness that for their own benefit? How do they monetize the data? Uh, and, and there are some uh, regulations and, 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 and legal issues they have to deal with where this information cannot be shared with third parties content providers, application providers, and so on. But the usage of the information, how it's used, where it's used, when it's used, is very information. As long as you don't correlate that to the actual information on the subscriber, that usage information is a powerful for advertisers and others. So our system, within the context of orchestration, allows the operator to extract this information, then obfuscate the user profile so they don't have to share the information of the user, yet share the information on the usage with their partners, whether it be search engines, whether it be application providers, and so on, and have a revenue share from that information. Right, right. And the other aspect that I found fascinating when talking to you earlier was that, that embedded in your abilities 
is uh, this caching function allows a lot of databases to kind of be virtualized and brought in. So there's kind of a, an easier way to deal with the roadmap of moving from the legacy systems to 4G to, to basically enabling your network to run faster and not necessarily have to map out, you know, new systems and you know if you're going to do the whole IMS core you, you know now most of the things you want to accomplish in IMS and affect your caching is how I kind of listen to it. Yep. Is that, is that a, a good portrayal? It is. Uh, today we see the mobile operators going from 2G to 2.5G to 3G and now looking at WiMAX or HSPS 3.5G to LTE and so on. What is important is they want to be able to serve the subscriber base across all of these uh, infrastructures. They want to be able to increase the ARPU regardless of where the subscriber resides, regardless of which network it's actually serving. So wouldn't it be nice if the operator could actually harmonize the information of the user and apply the policies to the user regardless of the network they're on? By, by Kibera's orchestration platform being able to cache that information on the profile, understanding where the user actually is and served by which network, and applying the policies across multiple networks, gives the operator an ability to then, in a, in a unified manner, serve the user base uh, across the whole country or across the territory that they serve. And, and that's a very, very powerful way to take a legacy environment and migrate it to today and going forward. Uh, the other aspect of it is related to the operational costs. Today, as the operators go from 5 to 10 to 20 to 80, in some cases 100 million subscribers, serving not 5 or 10 services, but perhaps serving you know, hundreds of services to a user, not on one device, but perhaps today we know that a user has five devices. Mm -hmm. and, to, and I was looking at a Cisco presentation recently, they talk about 14 devices or 15 devices over the next couple of years that every single user will be attributed to. Wouldn't it be nice if your OPEX did not have to mirror the subscriber growth, the services growth, but could be managed at a, at a much more uh, sort of a, in an exponential, not an exponential, but really a linear or less than a linear manner. What we do is we cache the information in memory, which means the transaction that has to be executed does not require a query to go in an external database for every single transaction. And by avoiding that dependency on an external database, your hardware footprint is reduced dramatically. On top of that, you get better performance and lower latency. So you're now able to scale your services to a large number of subscribers without having to scale a hardware footprint or your OPEX can be managed at a much, much more manageable level. Excellent. Manish, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate oh, it. Good to be here. Thank you.